All right, welcome everybody out. Tonight we're talking about being a professional friend maker. <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, it's network marketing, and so that's the point of it. If you're good at networking, you know, you can make this happen. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, so this, here's and it's going to be, hi guys, it's going to be a, more of a discussion um, because not everyone, you know, we're not the friend making experts. We learned a lot of skills. But I'm sure that um, we can learn from anybody. So you can go ahead and jump in, Beth and Ginger, and you know share your experiences if you like. Um, but first of all, we'd like to talk about why it is important to develop friend making skills. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of thing, a lot of the things you do in you know early network marketing business or in DoTerra is making friends with people. <clears throat> That's not unlike a lot of other businesses out there. It's, yeah. it's who you know. It's about the relationship. I mean, you go to sell people, um, you know, or get people to sign up for a contract or anything yeah. like that. It's built on a relationship of trust. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times people are not just buying what you're selling, but also buying you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So my parents, um, they own businesses in Australia. And um, they just started off with just putting a little small ad in the newspaper because they build kitchens. And, um, you know, through word of mouth, they are so busy all the time. And, um, you know, because everyone loves it and trusts them. And then uh, sometimes they don't even need to compare um, prices. They just say, look, so-and-so told me to, to go with you and I'm going with you. Um, and that's that's how it is with this uh, doTERRA business too. So um, we have a few new teammates and a few old teammates, and um, the, these are the skills that we need to develop. It's not like something that you you just have all the time. Some people are blessed with um, just uh, friendly abilities already, but others need to develop it, and you can develop it, and you should all develop it. There are some team leaders. Um, that are awesome and some are struggling with their team and they don't know why and I can see why um, but um, you know it's it's hard to kind of tell people that you need to make more effort making friends <laughs> with your team and things so of course you you um, create relationships of trust so that uh, you know you help people understand the benefits of the oils and then to enroll them and uh, then from that point on, you still need to continue this relationship. Um, and you should know what you're trying to do with people. You, you want them to um, have a, a skill for life because what we're teaching people is a lost art. It's an art of healing. Um, it's an art of recognizing um, certain things inside of us because sometimes we feel ill but we don't have words for it. Um, or we just say, look, I'm just uncomfortable. I don't know what it is. Um, so, you know, some people will start to heal and recognize, hey, it's my, actually my gut. Oh, actually, that's my, you know, um, kidneys or whatever. So, you know, there's lots of uh, um, skills that we can teach people. But anyways, um, then you, you're teaching people to heal themselves basically and as a friend when you have that trust you can say hey why don't you use these oils and then they will see that they can heal okay they'll trust you enough to heal and beyond that um, as a friend for some people that are you know they know what to do and they know where to go and they're building the business that friendship becomes like as you know you're supporting people along that journey of um, of growth and you celebrate with people so that so this whole business all along the way, it's about friendship. Okay. Um, so we'll and, and, and really that's what makes people want to do the terror as a business. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they see themselves helping other people. Yeah. Um, they, they find a lot of value in the essential oils and they have a great desire to share it with other people. That's right. The majority of those people who want to do the terror as a they business just have that. They just want to help people. Yeah. In fact, we, we don't actually see a lot of people that are, you know, start doTERRA as a business because they're in it for the money. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's a few, but um, most people just want to get in there because they, they want to help people. Um, now, I want to really clarify because I think sometimes people have a false belief that it has to be um, mutually exclusive. So they almost apologize for earning money um, from friends and family, um, you know, as if, you know, making friends, um, you, know, you know, for the purpose of helping them buy oils. They think it's, that's bad. And um, so once and for all, just decide in your mind and heart that it's a good thing. Um, things are reciprocated. If your friends own a store, you don't want to walk in there and get everything for free you know, because it's, it's, it's not good for them but you want to reciprocate. And so, you know, if you're giving your time, giving your service, be okay with being compensated for it. So I had a few people tell me, well, I'm helping so-and-so, you know, my sister, cousin, whatever. And they're like, but I don't want you to think that I'm just doing it for the money. And I, I said, I, I know, but they're, they're trying to explain it to themselves. So and make a decision now that it's okay to be compensated for your time and your efforts, okay? And when you value yourself, people will value what you have to offer. So your friendship and your service and your knowledge and your skills are valuable to them, okay? And that's really important. And of course, you know, for me, for Ben, we, we still have to work on it sometimes because sometimes we give too much and we see sometimes people don't appreciate that um, and sometimes when we charge, people appreciate it more. So it's interesting. Because sometimes giving things away for free doesn't help people or you. Okay. Anyways, we've just uh, clarified that, you know, that you can have French and friendship and um, a good loving relationship and be able to be paid too. Okay. All right. So we have some friendly tips for you. Um, so the very first one is have a desire to love people. So to develop that desire, you can smell geranium um, or if you have rose, rose is good too. But um, you want to, to love people and in your mind, you know, just tell yourself that I'm here to love people. Yep, that's good. <laughs> um, yeah. I, you know, and sometimes uh, it's just one way to learn to love people is to learn more about them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's hard to just say, well, desire to love people. Mm -hmm. But the things that you learn more about are the things you, you start to love yeah. and appreciate. Yeah. And part of so loving... Sorry. That I mean, if there's some ladies around the table, you know, you're asking them about them, you're finding out about mm -hmm. them, you're, you're learning about them. Everybody wants to tell you about themselves. Just ask them a few questions and get them going and sit back and listen and ask your find out questions and show a real interest and genuinely be interested. Mm -hmm. in That's right. And then that love will grow. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, one thing to help you if you struggle with the love for people because sometimes you'll think oh so and so so annoying <laughs> I'm struggling with loving this person today um, you can love yourself you know because sometimes we have a hard time loving ourselves so um, it's difficult to love others um, when you give yourself some slack sometimes you look at people and you see yourself in them and you think yeah you know, I get to her, you know, <clears throat> I'm kind of crazy sometimes too. So then you, you know, you're more understanding. So that's a really good skill to have. And that uh, being understanding is, uh, I think, the key mm -hmm. there when yep. you run into someone with some traits that you don't necessarily like. Yeah. The thing is, you don't have to love everybody. This is a business where you can choose who you work uh -huh. with. Yeah. Um, but you've got to serve somebody. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> that's the only way to get anywhere. Yeah. And, um, you know, we talk about this a lot, and Beth knows. We ask people about their avatar. Who do you want to work with? Because you, you have a certain personality, and you should be yourself, um, and you attract certain people. And so you, if you're clear on who you're attracting, then you know who you're really helping. 
Okay, so if you have some, you know, kind of funky people that are, don't care about the oils or don't care about what you're saying, you don't have to feel hurt and have to go out of your way to kind of convince them because they're not your avatar and it's okay. You are you can love them from a distance but not have to work with them. Mm. <laughs> and there's, there's a lot of people like, um, I remember when I first started in network marketing, um, there's all these uh, skills you can do to talk to people and make friends with anybody and, and sell them essential oils. And I used to do that, you know, sign up some people that helped me at the department store or something. Um, but, you know, there's not really that relationship there. And it's not necessarily someone I was I considered a friend or wanted to go and hang out with or had anything in common. So it was really difficult to perpetuate that relationship. So it's important that you um, yeah. find out who you want to work with. And you always want to serve everybody who comes and asks mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. Um, but the people that you um, are going to find their greatest satisfaction are those who can connect with. Yeah. They are going to connect with you. And then that service will be a lot more deep and meaningful. Yeah. So we bought furniture when we first got here and we signed up the people that sold us furniture and then, you know, they're chasing them around. Uh -huh. you know, so, you know, just we, you just got to create a relationship and um, continue on that relationship and just know that who your avatar really are. Mm. So anyways, that's that. That's that. Love people. Um, the second thing we want to talk about is smile and assume the best. So sometimes, um, well, in the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, um, Dale Carnegie talks about the million dollar smile because sometimes if you just smile it just sends a very quick um, message to people that um, they're they're important and you respect them um, and it just sends a lot of that good energy so smile guys <laughs> it's really easy but it's uh, important because I know sometimes when people um, are out and about and you're stressed and you think about all your stuff, you don't smile. Um, so just smiling gets people to start talking to you. So, you know, I like to join clubs and groups of people that uh, I like. So uh, here in Destin, we, we join a club and Beth has a club and I hang out with her friends. And so, you know, just smiling and talking to people. I mean, you just draw people to you. So. And I, I think everybody in the world, they're looking for someone with um, some brightness, some love, appreciation, someone that they can go to that will understand them and, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> you know, not judge them. Yeah. If you can be that person, people will just automatically be drawn to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Everybody is looking for some sort of inspiration or some sort of mm -hmm. understanding, someone to understand them. Yeah, and I, I've, I've, you know, I've had friendships where you know I meet someone I'm just, I've never seen them before, but I'm really enthusiastic, and I'm, I pretend like I've known this person forever, and, yeah. and a instant friendship um, yeah. pops out because I entered it like that. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be the exact person, like your exact avatar, but you know, you can make friends, make friends with a wide group of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so lots of people will say, oh, I don't have a lot of friends. And I think, oh, make them quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's another thing I, I um, we haven't listed here, but um, is finding where do you make friends? Where do you find the people that you're going to befriend? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways to do that. Like Jade mentioned, um, you know, joining groups, joining clubs, um, the, the business uh, – society in the area um the chamber, of commerce. chamber of commerce is there's Women's soccer club. moms there's um you know going to a free yoga class or um lots of things or you know a fun run or yeah. talking to other parents at this at the, your child's school um there unless you live in the middle of nowhere <laughs> Which there are still ways to make friends. And we're going to talk about, I think that's a topic for next week is um, social media. And the amazing thing about the world we live in is you can connect with anybody yeah. from 
anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, if you have internet connection, that is. <laughs> Which yeah. for the wide, most people, yeah. Yeah. So you guys want to add anything to that? Um, I think the one thing that I would add is that if you, like you were saying, if you put yourself out there, then you attract people. Mm -hmm. um, case in point, how we connected. I saw you across the room and I was like, I have to know her. <laughs> like, I just have to know who that person is. And so, you know, you just kind of have integrity in your actions and you will attract the right kind of people. And mm -hmm. yeah. And more and more, I'm so grateful for the work that I do. Right. I'm just going to cry. <laughs> It's so cool because we're friends forever, you know, and we share such a strong bond because, you know, when you're, you share some amazing experiences together that it's just um, meant to be. And you think, I'm working? <laughs> right? This is a cool job. <laughs> so anyways, I think that's, that's awesome. So, um, and we just, get more and more friendship that way the more clear we are about who we are where we're going who we're helping and this is just it's always it always blows my mind just um how cool um this business is okay and it feels great because i, I call it a business and um it pays like a business but it's such a different thing for me so Anywho, number three is listen well and be encouraging. Sometimes what people say and what they need is different. So I just try to listen to what the underlying need is. So you probe people with some questions that help them open up to you. And sometimes if people have a hard time opening up to you, I start with myself. So um, not like you're showing off about yourself, but you're you just, extending trust. Yeah. So um, you, you try to be real, right. And share with people, you know, be authentic, be yourself, try to share with people some of your, your struggles and your concerns and your worries um, about health, about whatever. And it gives people license to open up as well. Okay, because you're not perfect and then they want to share because they're like, oh, I have that too. Um, and then when they start talking, you know, you stop talking <laughs> and you listen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the things they say, they don't even know what they need, but you pick it up. Okay. And you learn more about them so you're able to serve them better. As they tell you more about them, it builds a relationship um, because there's someone else that knows a bit about them. Mm -hmm. And, and also, you know, you're, you're being, you're, you're being a good listener. You're showing yeah. interest in them and people are going to appreciate that. And as um, the next thing that is on our list here is um, look for needs. Right? And sometimes you just pair it back to them. You say, is this what you are feeling or is this what, um, it might help you. And sometimes it goes bing, you can see the light bulb in their head and they're like, yes, I think I need that. Um, because they don't know that they're confused or they don't have um, a, a purpose in life because they, they've just been going through the motions um, like everyone else. And no one's ever asked them, what do you like to do? you know, what makes you happy? Mm -hmm. And it's like, huh? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit funny. And then, um, yeah, that's a, I love it. I love finding, helping people find what makes them happy. And then we can meet their needs. And just parroting stuff back to people is a really good listening skill. So you say, so if I understand you correctly, um, this is what you said to me, mm -hmm. or um, I see um, this is how, is this how you feel? Or, you know, and sometimes that you have an opportunity to connect with them. If you've felt that same thing or you've had that same 
situation without going in and telling them everything about you. Say, I understand that because very succinctly tell your story in one sentence. I understand that because this and this happened to me. And they're like, yes, someone understands me. Being understood Mm -hmm. feels a fundamental human need. And most people aren't aware that they need that. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you understand them, you're able to communicate that back to them. Um, That's the, that's the first need, you know, and meeting their needs. Okay. We're selling essential oils. Um, We can think of needs, you know, with essential oils but it's not just that you're creating a friendship the friendship's got to be bigger yeah. than just your product that you're yeah. sharing mm-hmm. it's got to be you know a, a genuine interest like helping someone move in yeah. or um you know but also helping them find their happy place happiness because sometimes the health problem is just the surface of what truly they need um, and so once you help them in this area they have clarity to to find their path the second thing that um, being able to verbalize that back to them is empathy. You know, you feel something that they feel, and, and, and that makes a connection. Again, another thing, building, building relationships. Yeah. So we're all talking about um, professional friend-making skills here, and that's, yeah. that's how you do it because so friendship is a relationship. I want to build on what Ben said. Um, so you tell your story to connect that's the purpose so every time i share a story or an experience i have um i connect with people i don't do it to um impress you know impress or you know just to say here's my story too and you said something here and here i'm going to match that or equal that um so that's why i like to simplify my story to get to the point of you know i get you too Really, at the end of your story, really, that's why you're telling it. Instead of, hey, that happened to me too, let me share too. Give me some, um, you know, space on that um, soapbox. It's not that. Yeah, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's not, I'll tell you a conversation to avoid, mm-hmm. small talk. If you're talking about something completely unrelated or, you know, you could spout out poetry or list <laughs> um, historical events or talk about the weather. Those are those might be really good things to talk about, um, but they don't connect with people. Mm-hmm. They're not getting you anywhere. You're not learning anything if you're talking about those things. You're wasting time, and it's not it's not a time of, of where you say, "Oh, they said something about Guatemala. Uh, who do I know about Guatemala? Oh, I know someone from Guatemala once." It's not <laughs> about making those kind of connections. <laughs> think about their feelings. Think about you know their needs, and say like. Oh, you're feeling this. I feel that too. Yes. Or you know what? Your your best friend um, broke a promise to you. That happened to me once in high school. See, I put it in all one real sentence. Left out all the details. You don't have to tell the story. Happen. I understand how you feel. Yeah. And yeah. is this how you feel? You felt this and this, and, mm-hmm. and like you were stabbed in the heart, <laughs> 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 or whatever. Um, because if you're, if you're talking with someone that, that is similar to you and that's your avatar, um, you know, you'll, you'll make a connection with them and they'll, it builds that relationship. But if you're talking about the weather or if you're talking about politics or or something like that, you're you're probably missing a lot of opportunities Mm -hmm. to get to know the person, other person get to know you and building those connections. Yeah. Cause right now you're, you want to look for needs for, for how you can serve people um, so when I tell people go out and network, make friends, um, the first thing they'll say to you is, what do you do? Right. Um, you say exactly what you do. Um, don't go around about sort of way. So Beth, do you have a, you know, a confident answer? You don't have to, but, um, I, I don't have a fully confident answer. I'm still working on that. <laughs> That's honest. That's and really great. Appreciate no. that. Um, and mine varies a little bit depending on the person that I'm talking to. Mm-hmm. Um, so usually I say to people, I help people learn how to use essential oils for their health. Um, or I help people learn about natural solutions such as essential oils for their health. And then they say, well, that's interesting. And, you know, if they, because I'm listening to them, if they really genuinely sound interested, then I pursue it. Otherwise, I stop and I try to dig more stuff out of them. Because, you know, if I know them better, I know how to help them. So, um, 
yeah you can it, engage it. It, you, you can say it in, in a really um, thought-provoking way like oh i do the most amazing things uh helping you know share with people natural natural ways of doing things and they're like um tell me more <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so uh, if you're really enthusiastic about it and passionate about it they'll most likely want to know more but be careful you don't you know stand there and you, and you talk and talk and talk you, and talk <laughs> yeah it's, it's not going to be about you and you got to pick up on the non-verbal clues so they're looking at their watch either they have an apple watch and they're getting updates <laughs> on the, the ball game or something like that or they're just saying um you know i'm not interested in what you're saying right now or i'd, I'd rather be somewhere else Mm -hmm. Lots of lots of nonverbal cues that you can pick up on. So be be careful and watch for that because if you are concerned about them and, and how they feel at that moment, mm -hmm. you'll you'll be looking for those instead of being concerned about I gotta get in this topic and this topic and this topic and lead around to talk about this oil because I really know a lot about that oil. It's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna happen, but yeah. So it's it, actually you find that it's going to be less effort on your part once you connect to them. And also, you know, we're talking about building, you, we're talking about friend making skills and being a professional friend maker as part of growing your business. It's really hard for people to swallow that because like Jay um, started off with saying, you know, making friends to make money from those friends. It's more about making friends to eventually be able to help those friends. Yeah. Don't go into a first conversation with someone and bring mm -hmm. up essential oils. Be sincere and make a sincere friendship. Make a lot of friendships. Mm -hmm. And some of those friendships, you'll never talk to them about essential oils. You may never talk to them. Yeah. I mean, if it's a big yeah. part of your life, the subject will come up. Yeah. But you'll know if that person's open to natural solutions mm -hmm. or not, or if that's yeah. their sort of thing or not. Yeah. Um, but don't go and say, okay, I want to talk to Betsy Sue. And on my first conversation with her, I want her to buy a diamond kit and I want her to do all these things and sign up for this class and everything. So just go there with the, with the goal of making a friend. Mm -hmm. So get, you know, find out a few things about them without them. You know, you can make a game of it, find out some things about them without them necessarily finding out a lot about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it goes with the reconnecting with friends too, because I know that um, a lot of us have lost contact with our high school friends, our fr friends of families and things like that. So when you first start to reconnect <laughs> with people, um, don't talk about yourself. You want to talk about them and see but, where they're at, what they're doing. That's right. You know, one of uh, um, in, in the network marketing world, um, one of the things that you do to build your list of leads is sit down and write out a list of everybody you know and that creates you know really awkward situations where you're contacting joe schmo from 10 years ago you've never contacted him before you say hey joe schmo um i i think it would have changed I've discovered <laughs> these essential oils that are really amazing will help my life and i'd love to talk to you about them what's joe schmo gonna think he's gonna think you're you you haven't talked you're a schmuck that's what he's gonna think i'm a schmo you're a schmuck <laughs> <laughs> you haven't contacted me for 10 years and you contact me and this is the first thing you say you know sometimes we're silly we we just do that we follow somebody else's suggestion and, yeah um, so the thing is to reignite that friendship hey joe schmo um haven't talked to you for a while just reaching out to say hi um you know yeah so what i do is i i comment doing? on the picture that they posted. If social media you know? does make it a lot easier to so, contact Joe Or something Joe like Schmel. that. It's easy. It's like, hey. And find Joe Schmel in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> hey, where are you living now? What is, that looks like it's a fun, pretty place or whatever. Very relevant. Relevant. Yeah, what are you doing now? <laughs> okay. Just connecting with some old friends. How are you doing? So we want to move on to the next point is to praise and treat people like they're important. We've all received really bad service where someone would come up and they're 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 really grudging that you even walked into the store and they don't want to help you and they think that their life would be better off if they had no customers at all. <laughs> <laughs> Some people that are just hired to be, be there. Opposite of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And my mum is the best at that. I've noticed that all our life, she's been such a social best butterfly. Best people. Oh, so, so um, I think her, her goal in life is to feed people. So uh, she has friends all the time. And uh, so when people come along, she calls them sister. Because um, in Vietnamese, we don't have the word you. Because she's forced <laughs> to call them sister. Because yeah. that's what the language is. <laughs> and then, um, you know, she talks and then she, you know, she feeds them. She's like, you know, here's, I'm doing this. I don't know how she does it, but it's awesome. And then, of course, they become her bestie. And, um, and then if they complain about a headache or something, anything, she's like, oh, no, you need this now. You know, and they're like, what is it? These essential oils. They're really good. Try it. And they're like, okay, because they, they just have this connection with her. She made them feel important, you know, important to, to feed them, to whatever. Um, and yeah. it's amazing. And that don't try to, you know, develop a relationship to um, bring it around to essential oils. That, mm-hmm. that part will happen automatically. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. develop a lot of friendships. Be a professional mm-hmm. friendship. Uh, friend right. maker. And the other things will come along. Yeah, she doesn't know how to sign people up. She just does things. And when people ask more questions, she's like, ah, I talked to my daughter. <laughs> but um, because it helped her with her cancer and everything, she just can't stop. So that's awesome. So praise people and um, treat people important. The best way to do that is to consider people important and, mm-hmm. and really sincerely look for the good in people. If yeah. you're having problems with it, find think of a few people that um you're having problems loving or having problems appreciating and list out qualities it's like you know good marriage advice okay what are 10 things you like about your husband (laughs) (laughs) list out the qualities you know what you like in that person and that will help you you know be able to find things to praise people more you know ben ben used to be a lawyer and he says to me that Okay, he's he's a lawyer. Yeah, he says that you can find evidence for anything for either side. So if you decided that you're going to like this person, then you can find evidence to like them. And just work with the evidence mm -hmm. you have. Yeah, build your case around that. Mm -hmm. Argue for a good, better world. Well, peace (laughs) for Josh. (laughs) Well. Alrighty. So the other tip here is to find similarities and connections. That doesn't mean you, that person is from Guatemala and you think of someone else. Sorry, that's a bad example. No. Yeah. Um, you know, true good examples. And think about feelings mm-hmm. and um, things that are important to people. So I've, uh, I've met some people sometimes and then, you know, if, if one person says, hey, I, I like, I don't know, brownies um and the other person you know if they like it say yes if they don't just listen okay but some people feel the urge to assert i don't like brownies i like croissants yeah but (laughs) but you have to know why you're saying what you're saying okay what does that do for that relationship Mm, just don't talk to be heard it doesn't build so i hear that a few times and i think so she needs to really recognize what she, her goal is because when so-and-so says this, find something in common. If you don't have anything in common, listen and just, you know, accept them for their differences. Don't say, well, I am like this. Um, doesn't build. And so don't think be, about that. Don't be fake. This is really good dating advice. Too. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't put on a fake personality or try to be someone that you're not Mm -hmm. because you'll have to build the relationship all over again when things start working out. Um, Good dating advice because, you know, a lot of guys, you know, they'll try to put on their best and it's always good to be on your best behavior and your best self, but to be someone that you're not, you know, to be able to get a girl. And then when you got the girl, um, tell her who you really are and then (laughs) see how things work. You know, it's just based and their whole relationship was based on a farce from the beginning. So just be who you are. And like, like we said, when starting your conversation, um, to build that relationship, sometimes of trust, you, you need to extend the trust and say, um, tell them a little bit about you. And when the walls of distrust come down, they'll, you can ask them about them. Mm-hmm. And so if you're 
feeding information, but information that um, is meaningful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got lots of good glue, and sometimes the differences make it so fun, you know. So. Well, and I was going to add, just don't be contrary, you know. Like, you know, if you if you have something good to say, say it. If you don't have anything to say that's going to be uplifting, then just zip it. Yeah, that's what <laughs> you, know, I don't, you don't have anything nice to say. Don't exactly. Say that's you exactly know. what. Especially, yeah. especially in, the, in the area of politics, if they express a, a, a political opinion that's separate, you know, very different from yours, just say, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> accept it and move on. Yeah, you know, it. Just take it and move on and find something that you do have in common. Yeah. I don't like blue. Oh, really? I think the sky is really pretty, you know? Don't, don't, you don't just say anything. Just be that, you know, and find something that you do like. Or, or it's an opportunity to find out more. Uh, yeah. Why don't you like blue? Uh, was a person in your family murdered by someone who's <laughs> blue? Or... <laughs> Wearing blue. Yeah. Yeah, no, but, yeah it, you know. Personal traumatic we, childhood. Exactly. Yeah. Just make it um, comfortable for yeah. them. Yeah. 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 And treat them like a celebrity, um, yeah. you know. They're important. They don't like blue. Wow, that's really cool. I didn't know that about you. That's interesting. Yeah. Tell me more about yeah. other colors you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And maybe we just need to get out the color wheel and we need to find out, you know? <laughs> you like blue because. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, <laughs> it is, yeah. That's one of those topics that doesn't, I don't know, it might mean a lot to them. <laughs> yeah. When talking about blue, but sometimes it's so easy to get off into topics that are yeah. you're talking about nothing. Yes. Um, and I know you're just giving an example. But. Yeah. So that's awesome. You know, and we don't always have to find similarities. We can accept differences and celebrate diversity. You know, that's, I love that about people because they don't have to be me and I don't have to be them. And I just love and adore them for being who they are. Or you like shopping for clothes? Oh, that's fantastic. I don't like shopping for clothes. I'm, it's wonderful to meet you. <laughs> or will you take me shopping with you so we can find some good clothes? Because I don't like shopping at all. You know, so that is something that they can then teach you something or, you know, you're, they're serving you in a way, again, making them feel important. Yeah. You made them there feel important. That's right. Very yeah. good. Excellent. Yeah. I love that. So, you know, when people are different, sometimes um, people don't like it. But Not I, when I people say, are different. Everybody is different. Yeah, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I'm just saying that to remember, remind yourself that you can accept those differences and celebrate diversity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing is your word is gold. All right, so you honor and trust yourself and um, value your word. This is really important. Um, you know, as I was growing up, my dad would say, you know, I'm not going to say yes to that unless I feel very, very confident that I'll be able to do it. So when the kids say, Dad, can you take us here and here and here? And he says the same thing. I'm not going to say yes to that unless I feel very confident that I can do that. And if he ever says yes, he will remember and he will do it. So no matter how long it takes, you will do it. And um, I do that to people too. Uh, when I say I do something, I remind them that I said, look, I, I still remember what I said. So I'll keep, uh, I'm working on that, but I'll do it. Um, but if you don't know when you'll be able to do it, don't promise them a time. You know, so your word is gold. In this day and age, um, I've... Uh, I know that it's not something that people stress, but it's still very, very valuable to honor your words. In the past, just like, you know, the parents talk to each other and they say, hey, your son will marry my daughter or something. And um, that's a contract. Mm -hmm. So, so give, I'll give you a, a good example that, um, that people don't really think about. They say, okay, I have an essential oil class at seven and it, it'll only go for 45 minutes. When 45 minutes comes along, you better be done. <laughs> I don't care how interesting the class is. You say, I declare this class over. Yeah, so I tell people that. And I'm taking extra yeah. um, questions if you guys want to, but the class is over. You guys are free yeah. to go because I said yeah. that we would end the class yeah. this time. It's, you know, because you're 
there's no getting out of it. You know, you're you're a salesman when you're telling people about essential oils. You're sharing with them benefits. That's, yeah. But you know you have to stick with your word and be genuine, and there, the time's not going to run out. If you are genuinely interested in helping those people, you can, you know, it, you're not going to lose opportunity just by cutting your class short when you said you would cut it. In fact, they will trust you more because they know that you stuck them to your word. Yeah, stuck them. Push it on. You're like, ooh, they're pushing it. I wonder what else they're pushing. <laughs> no. Um, that, that's a good point because sometimes some people have um, time limits. So one of my friends, she's a school teacher and she said, I want to come to a class, but I can't. And I said, look, come after school into my classroom and we'll talk about this. And I said, oh, you know, I'll take no more than 15 minutes. And I actually looked at my watch the whole time and I thought, you know, I'm not going to say more than I need to. And within 15 minutes, she was like, oh my gosh, I am in. And so I was like, that was the shortest class I've ever done. And it worked. Um, and other times I teach people, I say, you know, this class is going to be an hour. But when I have an hour, I just tell people, well, I'm done with what I have to say. Um, and so you punctuate it. And then, you know, you allow people to ask questions so that they feel in their hearts and mind that you're done. But then now it's their turn and they, they take um, as much time as they want to. Um, that's good mm. yeah um, well i mean that goes for everything if you yeah. say i'm going to have a class at this time in this place mm -hmm. and you advertise that mm -hmm. um and then something else comes up and you're like oh i have, I have something else better and i no one's promised you know mm -hmm. stick with your promises say i've i've i've, I've scheduled that because sometimes when you um market things like that when you um, promote things like that you don't know who is coming that not everybody's RSVPing. Sometimes they'll just show up. And if they show up and you're not there, mm -hmm. that says something bad about your integrity. Yeah. 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 Bad experience for them. Yeah. So just stick with what you plan. You know, do your homework and and like like Jed's dad was saying, you know, until you're sure that you can do it, don't make empty promises. And when you make promises, make sure you fall through. Yeah. And that um, the, your word is golden also um, means you are loyal. You're loyal to your friendship. You're loyal to your business. You're loyal to yourself. So, yeah. So there's all the friendship making skills to share with you. <laughs> Anything else that uh, uh, you, Beth or Ginger, would like to add to this list? Okay. Pretty simple. Um, it, we do need to understand that you're, you're out there making friends and not everybody that you make friends with will join some salesman they have in their head like, oh, I can sell this to anybody. Well, that's called manipulation. <laughs> they can trick you or force you or make you feel so uncomfortable that you're going to sign up just to get them up to okay, be quiet sure, and get them off your shoulders. Yeah. Sometimes those things work and that's called passion if it works in the right way where someone is so passionate about that and they keep on bringing it up because they are convinced that it will help you and that you need it um that's a different story than someone trying to twist your arm and try to make you feel bad or well everybody who's smart is doing this you're not stupid are you <laughs> ways not to sell <laughs> You know, um, but, you know, making friends like Ben said that, you know, you may not be selling to that person, you're just making the world better. But these people, because they love and trust you, they become your referral center, whether you like it or not. That's what I was going to say too, yep, yep. yep. Um, they may not be open to alternative forms. Maybe they're like, I like the pills, I like the doctors, I like um, mm -hmm. all the things that, you know, natural solutions <laughs> try to avoid. But they have tagged, they, they built a relationship of trust with you. Mm -hmm. And in their minds, they've tagged you like, this is a contact that I have. Someone who knows a lot about natural solutions. And in their minds, when they're having a conversation with others, someone else was like, oh, we have a headache. Well, haven't you tried, um, you know, head painkiller? And like, oh, I really don't like taking drugs. I wish there was something natural I could take. I know someone. And they give you their details, they call you and they say, you guys gotta connect. 
<laughs> and they're they're your eyes and ears, and you have that relationship with them. And they're out there finding referrals for you because you have that relationship with them, even though you're, they're not your customer. Mm -hmm. So just it's about making friends, expanding your network. Um, that sometimes means going out and talking to people. And of course, with social media as well, there's um, always a way to reignite old friendships or um, reconnect connect with new people. Or There's a lot of groups on Facebook now that you can get into conversations with people that you've never seen and that might look like clowns or something. I don't know. <laughs> but you, can get, you can meet a lot of great people. And there's the world is full of great people. So yeah. I'm blabbering on about nothing. So um, one Sorry. thing that I was just thinking of before we leave is um, just being, um, uh, I think Beth, you remind me of this and my sister does too. You're very mindful of people and just a quick short note. Consider it. Um, and like a gift that is meaningful, um, you know, makes them feel important. That's the, it goes back to that. But, you know, Beth is very good at that. Um, she'll see what people need and then she'll, you know, make sure that they get that. And it's like, hey, I didn't even know, but I actually do need that. Um, mm -hmm. And so you found their needs and then you make them important. And then that, that helps them feel this trust for you. Um, so that's why I think my mom's good because she's like, oh, I know what foods you like. You know, you like soup, I can make soup. You like, you know, noodles, I can do noodles. Um, Roots are love language. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And my sister likes to, to find the right gift for people too. And I think, how good are you? You know, <laughs> but um, that everybody's different. So um, I just have to find my thing that I'm good at to help people feel important and um, meet their needs. Okay. That's it, guys. Yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap that up. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Um, this has yeah, been cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, make friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. stop our recording now. <laughs>